Just when I thought that the Paradigm Founder 120H was my endgame speaker, I went and heard the Monitor Audio Server Series 300 7G. My name's Taps, this is 0102 Studio, and this is a review of said speaker. Let's get into this. Okay, so before you start freaking out, no, I don't think that the Monitor Audio Speaker is in the same class as the Paradigm Founder 128. Get it. However, I'm doing the Monitor Audio Review directly after uh, the Paradigm Review, so it's still fresh in my mind. But if you do factor in price to performance, then you have a bit of a better fight. And if you're not looking to remortgage your house to afford a pair of speakers, the modern audio speaker starts looking a lot better. Speaking of looks, the current Silver Series is the sexiest iteration of that speaker lineup to date. They are absolutely gorgeous. They're beautiful looking pieces of audio furniture. You get a choice of real wood veneers or beautifully painted and finished cabinets. The speakers are available in a beautiful white, natural walnut, ash, which is kind of like oak, uh, black, and a piano gloss black. My review sample arrived in walnut, which to be honest, wouldn't have been my first choice if I was to pick out a finish of my own. I'm really attracted to the ash finish and the white finish of these speakers. And that's because I previously owned the Monitor Audio RX2, which is now the Silver Series 100. And I love the way that speaker looked. Now, that color of speaker would completely clash with my current floors, so that would be a non-starter in this house, but I do like the way that looks. The natural walnut actually fits in my room really well. It complements the floors, and it also complements the large sideboard that the speakers bookend when I have them set up. The gorgeous veneer contrasts nicely with the black surrounds on all the speakers, and then the white or grayish white drivers really pop out and the whole thing looks like a beautiful, compelling package. I adore the way these speakers look and kudos to Monitor Audio's design department because they knocked this one out the park. The 300 sits between the 200 and the 500 within the three floor standards in the silver range. The smaller 200 doesn't have a dedicated mid-range driver and sports five and a half inch drivers for bass. And the larger 500 has the same mid-range driver but sports two 8-inch drivers and an overall larger cabinet. The Silver 300 comes packaged with outrigger feet and spikes. Admittedly, I would completely ditch the feet because I feel like they detract from the overall slim look of the speaker. But I got kids and these are loners so I don't want them to get damaged or knocked over so the outrigger feet stay on but if I had a choice, I'd leave them in the box. Around the back, you'll find two sets of binding posts located at the bottom and two base reflex ports, one a foot from the top and the other a foot from the bottom. Having rear firing base ports, one would think that you would need to yank them out from the wall a fair bit to get them to sound their best, but that's not overly realistic for me in my space and I suspect it's not overly realistic to a lot of consumers. So I pulled these speakers about six or seven inches out from the wall, which worked in my space. And given the modest cabinet size and the smaller driver size of the speaker, I found that that worked quite well. And I did have them towed in towards center just a touch. The only nitpick I have on these speakers overall is the speaker grill. It's magnetic, yay, that's nice, but they feel like they belong on a much cheaper speaker. Like they're black grills, but they're not exactly black black. They're kind of like dark gray or they're like a black that's been left out in the sun for too long. Like they seem a bit faded or muted and they don't really complement the speaker in the way that I think the grill should. Maybe that's just me, but personally, I'd choose to leave the speaker grills in the box. The tweeter is protected well enough by that metal waveguide, though people with kids would probably want to leave the speaker grills on because those beautiful white-ish gray drivers would make a perfect canvas to kids that don't know not to touch daddy's speaker. The Silver 300 is a three-way design with a dedicated mid and bass driver. You get a one-inch gold dome tweeter with a beautiful black waveguide over top of it. You get a three-inch mid-range driver 
and two six inch bass drivers. Impedance is eight ohms. In-room frequency response is stated to be 31 Hertz to 35 kilohertz. Crossovers are 750 Hertz on the low and 2.8 kilohertz between the mids and the highs. The recommended power amplifier requirement for the speaker is 80 to 200 watts. Full disclosure, for the majority of this review, I use my Cambridge Audio CXA60 and that amp is about 20 watts shy of the minimum power requirements and I feel like it drove it just fine. I also subbed in my NAD 326 BEE as well and that's a 50 watt amp so what 30 watts shy of the minimum power requirement and that worked perfectly too. So. If you're looking at these speakers, you don't have to buy a new amp if you only got 50 watts on hand. These are review samples, so I wasn't the first person to receive these speakers, and therefore there is no run-in required because they've been used before. Coming off the Founder 120H to the Silver 300, I was expecting a smaller soundstage, less refinement, less detail, and a weaker bass overall. And I assumed that Given a modest cabinet size and smaller drivers, that I wasn't going to be treated to a big, impactful, engaging sound. So when I took delivery of these speakers, I set them up in our living room instead of setting them up in the basement where I had the Paradigm Founders. It's an adequate size to give these speakers a fighting chance. And then holy I was completely wrong. I started off with vocal tracks just to ease my way into getting used to the sound of these speakers. My wife's into Lana Del Rey these days and that track Brooklyn Baby kind of kicks ass. Yeah, I know we're a little late to the Lana Del Rey party, but, and I still remember just listening and then pausing and then just shouting, like calling my wife, like, oh my God, you got to come hear this. At first listen, it sounded just as big and full and detailed as what we heard from Paradigm. I did not expect this whatsoever. My wife and I just sat on the couch and just ran through track after, after track after track. And we slowly fell in love with these speakers. Listening more, it was more of the same. I mean, it's not the same SPL level as the Founder 120Hs, and it doesn't go as deep. I wouldn't classify these speakers as overly bright, but they definitely are more lively than they are neutral. Lively doesn't mean that the treble is too forward or tinny. Unlike the Paradigm, the Silver 300 isn't as like in your face. Like the treble is there, it's clear and it's detailed. Unlike the Paradigm, which is more pinpoint accurate and focused and shed a uh, light on every single detail in the sound, the treble on the 300s is revealing enough and rolls off just a touch in comparison. They do, however, kick the crap out of the BMW 685s that I have behind me. I mean, I really need to get new speakers, man. I mean, compared to the Silver 300s, those sound like 1980s ghetto blasters. Like they're not even close to being the same. It was only when I started playing more bass heavy tracks that I noticed any shortcomings in the bass department. Playing Celestial Navigation from the late great Marcus Intellects, I realized that I needed to turn a sub on when the bass dropped. I used my BMW 610 for this. I left the sub on for the remainder of the time spent with them as the added weight added a lot to the sound overall. It's hard to quantify this really, but it's also like a fast and capable speaker. Like playing Final Lap from G. Jones and Eprom, it's a really frenetic track and with lots of switches and high paced drums. And it really sounds like every club experience I've ever had crammed into three minutes and 46 seconds. But this speaker, really pulls it off. And I feel like that's a track that you need a speaker that's able to stop and start quickly and um, is fairly unflappable with more, I guess, detailed music. What I love playing was ambient tracks through these speakers. Usually when I'm working on design concepts or banging out a sketch or two in my downtime, I found a short track called Skyming by, I'm gonna have to read it here, Signy Golan. These are not pinpoint accurate speakers by any stretch. Like I towed them in a little bit to get a bit more of a center focus, but I don't know if that helped too much. Like if you were to sit in the center position and then just have someone sit beside you, you're going to have pretty much the same listening experience. And to me, not having an overly centered speakers or narrow centering presentation, like 
is a bit better for me because I do a lot of off-axis listening in general. Like sitting dead center on the couch just isn't overly comfortable if I'm the only one there. I tend to sit off to the left, especially if I'm drawing or I have reference or a coffee or something, you know, like I, it's kind of weird to sit dead center on a couch unless I'm doing an, any intention listening for these sort of reviews. Also, a wider soundstage on a speaker works better for me in general, just because I also listen to these speakers when I'm in the kitchen cooking and day to day, it's just easier to have like a wider soundstage overall. I didn't watch movies at all through these speakers. I know I should have to do a proper review, but from what I've heard from music, if you're gonna use these for movies, just get a sub to fill in the low end and you're off to the races. Well, I love these speakers. And if you care about the appearance of a speaker as much as you do the sound coming out of it, then these are speakers you need to lend your ears and your eyes to. These are high-end speakers for not high-end money. And personally, I think I found my end game living room speaker. Now I just need to convince my wife. Wish me luck. <laughs>